Hi, welcome back. Let's review the loss of exponents. Understanding the loss of exponents will help us and greatly benefit our strategies as we proceed to the um, manipulation of expressions with fractional exponents or even for the exponential equations. Let us try to talk about or review those loss of exponents as we answer or simplify items here. So for number one, we are tasked to simplify the expression with these factors. All of the factors here or terms are placed side by side. And as therefore, we are going to use here the multiplication law since all of the terms here are multiplied to each other. In the multiplication law of exponents, we just simply need to copy the base and add the exponents. But wait. When you say add the exponents, make sure that we are talking about the exponents of the same basis. In this case, let's start here with the first base here, a. And then we are going to add the exponents of all terms here with base a. So you have here a squared. Next, b, not, do not add. Do not add the exponent of this here, another a. So simply add negative 3 and then another a here plus 4. This is for the exponentiations with base a. However, we also have exponentiations for base b. The first here is for this term. If Again, there's no clear indication on what is the exponent of a variable or expression, or even if there's no other uh, mention of exponent, that automatically means an expression with uh, exponent of 1. And then plus, the other expression here, exponentiation with base b is this, b cubed. So add here 3. Only add the exponents of the same basis. Lastly, c, c to the power of 4 plus the exponent of the remaining term here for c is again 1. And then right after this, we just simply need to simplify the exponents and we will get our result. Here, you have a to the power of 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Plus 4 is we have here positive 3. In short, a cubed. Next, b, 1 plus 3 is 4, so b to the power of 4. And finally, c, 4 plus 1, which is 5, or c to the power of 5. This is what happens when we apply the multiplication law of exponents for item number 1. Again, do not combine the exponents here as the bases are not anymore the same. Let's proceed to number 2. For number 2, we may notice that for the it's already a, an, um, a fractional form of expression where the numerator has different bases, p and q. Similarly, for the denominator, p and q. In this case, we cannot use the multiplication law of exponents for the numerator nor the denominator since the expressions with the same bases are now placed on two different uh, points, again, numerator and denominator, and they are separated by the operation of division. In short, this will undergo the division law of exponents, which tells us that we can combine these expressions with P and then the other way for Q. To do that, you have here P, copy the base, and for the exponents, subtract the, ex the exponents. And it should be the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. Do not interchange them because the rule st states that the minuend for the process of subtraction is the exponent of the numerator, while the subtrahend should be the exponent of the denominator. That's for P. Now for Q, 
you may do this just to separate them. It's up to you. You have 7 minus 5. And then, therefore, you have here P. 10 minus 4 is 6. And you have here Q and then 2. Looking at the expression, since they have different bases now, that's already your final answer. P to the power of 6 times Q squared. Moving forward to item number 3. Okay. Item number 3 now has this form. When you look at the terms inside the grouping symbol, they're actually of different bases. You have here 4. You have F and G. So you cannot apply here the multiplication law inside. Rather, we can now apply the power law of exponents. Power law tells us that if an exponentiation is all again raised to another ex exponent, we could just simply share or distribute the exponent to all terms and the operation will become a multiplication of exponents. Again, it's not multiplication of terms. The terms are being raised to another expression. Then we multiply exponents. This, if this is the case, we will get here 4, originally to the power of 1, times the exponent outside 3. Let me try to rewrite it here. Okay. And then you have your f, uh, originally raised to the power of 5, but then to be multiplied by 3. And finally, you have G raised to our G cube, rather, to be multiplied again by 3. This is what happened, uh, what happens now, sorry, for the power law. And we just simply need to multiply the exponents. So we have 4 cube, you have F 5 times 3, not plus, multiply. 5 times 3, 15. And you have here G 3 times 3, 9. Do you think this is really the final answer? Well, some might argue yes, because we cannot combine out the expressions now because of different bases. That's correct. But I would like to emphasize that the goal here is to simplify. That would mean this constant here raised to the power of 3 or cubed should be simplified as well. And 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. And then copy the other terms, f to the power of 15. And then you have g to the power of 9. This is the result for number 3. So if you have noticed, each of the expressions here have uh, will use different types of um, laws. You have here the multiplication law, division law, and the power law. After the next, probably we also meet other forms of loss or other loss rather. And then some of it may also use the combination of the rest. Let's talk about number four. For number four here, we are given with an expression with exponent of zero. And there, this, there is a, um, what do you call this one? The law of zero exponent, which tells us that any expression, any number, any variable raised to an exponent of zero will be always equal to one. The proof of that is actually in your module with the use of the division law. You might want to read that for reference. So we just need to apply it here. Looking at the first term as it is raised to zero, we can say that the whole expression for this term alone will be equal to one. Okay, times. Here you have negative 3, differentiated to, okay, the first term is where all terms are, are exp expressed as an expression with exponent of 0. That's why all of them are equal to 1. But here, only k is raised to 0, so that will become 1, another raised to squared, okay? Again here, k to the power 0, only k is raised to 0. That's why it's only, the, it is the only expression that will become 1. Negative 3 is still negative 3. Next, this 1 here. So you will have negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 and then squared. So the answer for number 4 is just simply 9. This is with the use of the uh, law of zero exponent, where we could just apply immediately that any expression or number or variable or term 
raised to the power of zero will always be equal to one. The longer method for this is if we are going to apply the power law. We're going to apply the power law to all terms. Let us see what will happen. For the first term, you will have negative three. It's originally raised to the power of one times zero. And then you have k squared times zero. That's for the first group. Okay. Second, you will have here negative three originally to the raised to the power of one times two because squared is what is shared again with the use of power law. And you have k to the power of zero times two. This is for the second term. Then simplify them one by one. You have here negative three raised to zero because one times zero is zero. And then k raised to zero since two times two, zero is zero. For the next term, you have negative three raised to two, okay? But take note that if it's a negative number, make sure that there is a parenthesis. Because if you're going to input, especially if you're using calculator, negative three without parenthesis and raise it to two, the answer would be negative nine. Take note of that. Next here, you have k, zero times two is also zero. And then it happens like this. Negative three raised to zero is one. Not negative one because again, it should be the whole. Sorry for that, it should be the whole. One times k to the power of zero is one times negative three to the power of two is nine times k to the power of zero is also one. So basically the answer is still one times one times nine times one, you'll have here nine. So either of the uh, two processes is correct. The first is uh, automatically applying the law of negative exponent, or sorry, law of zero exponent. Or you could use the power law before you apply that law of negative uh, zero exponent, you will still get the same result. My point here of sharing this is that when you try to raise a number, especially a negative number rather, to an exponent, make sure to enclose them in another parenthesis so that the negative sign will not be uh, moved out or disregarded rather. Okay. So number five. Now for the last item for this short review, okay? So we have this expression all to the power of negative one. Now we do have the law of negative exponents. That's, that's correct. But my suggestion here is for it to be easier, let us try first to use the power law, okay? Because there might be some confusion as to the process uh, that will be involved in simplifying this using the law of negative exponent. Why confusions? Because again, we are dealing with negatives. So might as well try to use the power law. And in this case, we are going to share the exponent, not just here, not just there and there, but as well as the exponent of the denominator. So this is equal to, let me have it this way. Hopefully I could write it better. You have here W squared times negative one. Only the exponent, power law, okay? X negative two times negative one. And then Y, you have positive two times negative one. All over W originally one times negative one. And then X originally one times negative one. And then you have Y originally one times negative one. This is by the application of the power law where we distributed the exponent of negative one to all terms inside the grouping symbol. Then simply get the values. You have here W power of negative two, okay? And then you have here X to the power of positive two, Y to the power of negative two, all over to y, W to the power of negative one, X to the power of negative one, and then Y to the power of negative one. From this, you could also apply the division law if you want to, since you have here pairs of various uh, num expressions with the same basis. But then again, with the use of this negative exponent, some might be confused. So my suggestion is first to apply the law of negative exponents. 
the law of negative exponents tells us that if an expression with negative exponent, not the, not the base, huh? the expression with a negative exponent may be, be, uh, may be transformed into a positive exponent by from a numerator placing the whole expression to the denominator and from the denominator placing the whole expression to the numerator. My point is this. Let us use the same color, sorry. The first term, W, you have your negative 2. So move it down. So you have here already positive 2, W squared. X will remain as there, X squared. Y, negative 2 will also be brought down here and become positive. As for the items in the denominator, supposedly W is here. But we need to move it up to make it positive, as well as x, as well as y. Okay? Move, I'm placing it here first. So this will be continued as, okay? You will have this expression, sorry for that. You have x squared, w, x, y, all over w squared, and then y squared. Now that all exponents are positive, that's, this is the time that we can apply the other rules or laws of exponents. I'm talking about for x squared, since x is in the same uh, area, numerator, we're going to use the multiplication law. But for w and y being the variables are, or the expressions are found in num both numerator and denominators, we will use the division law. So for x, you will have your x to the power of 2 plus, we have here 1, 1. For w, you have here, again, that interchange the exponents. You have originally here 1 minus 2. Because if you're going to make it 2 minus 1, that would mean that the exponent of the numerator is 2 and 1 for the denominator. But it's the other way around. So you have your 1. Sorry for that. 1 minus 2. Same thing with y. 1 minus 2. As there is also 1 there. Simplify further. You have x cubed. And then you have y to the power of negative. Sorry, double power of negative 1. And then y to the power of negative 1. Further, we need to simplify it in such a way that all exponents are positive. Now, we could bring these two down and making a a fractional expression equal to cube x cube is still in the numerator since the exponent is positive and we'll have here w to the power of one y to the power of one both exponents are positive or you could write it without the exponent of one x cube over w y it is a longer uh, process since we have applied many processes like number one, the power law, number two, the law of negative exponent, and then we have multiplication law, division law, and all the rest. Because we also again use here the law of negative exponent. As long as our goal is to simplify it, and that is this is the request of this practice exercise. So these are the answers for this practice exercise. You may want to review this from time to time. And use this as you prepare for our assessments later on. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have learned something and, or, or you have um, refreshed your, your knowledge on the loss of exponents because we will use these concepts as we move on to the next video soon. Goodbye, everyone.